Conversations with Gary, a weekly podcast featuring the preaching and teaching ministry of Gary E. Wright. The music is provided by Doug Noonan and Renewal Band and is used with permission. My faith is in you, Lord. Welcome you today to Conversations with Gary, and I'm so excited to have time with you. Um, today I'm asking the question, what are you here for? Uh, why, why are you here on earth? Uh, we often think that to ourselves, even if we never say the words uh, out loud. Uh, I think we lay in bed at night and stare at the ceiling and say, what? <laughs> why am I going through this? What, what, what is this really all about? And the Bible is great to help us uh, find our way. And Jesus... His words, he understood that staring at the ceiling, thinking, why am I here? And we're going to look at some of his words that are so helpful and have been so helpful to so many people down through the centuries uh, since they fell on the first human ears. And this is from John 15, and Jesus is talking to his disciples, but we know that uh, he also said later, everything I've said to you disciples goes for everybody that's going to come after you. Uh, And so it applies to us all. And we have Jesus saying in verse 9 of, of chapter 15 of the Gospel of John, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love, and if you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. And then he describes his relationship with the disciples and, again, the desired relationship he has with each one of us. You are my friends. I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. And we go on. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy may be your joy and your joy wholly mature. This is my command, love one another the way I've loved you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do the things that I command. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then the Father will give you everything you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Now I'm going to kind of go in reverse reverse order of the way those things were said. But I think one of the most outstanding things that could ever fall on any of our ears is for have God to look at us and say, I've chosen you. I've chosen you to be on my team, (laughs) the Jesus team. I've chosen you to be my child. I've chosen you. I picked you. You know, being picked is a wonderful thing. (laughs) Uh, I remember on the playground when I was a kid, moments when I wasn't picked. You know, I... I was always a little bit taller than even kids who were older than I. And when we would play sports, when we'd play basketball, you know, they'd always do that thing where, you know, you had two captains and, and uh, you know, you, those captains were usually the most popular people. Didn't mean they were the best players, but they were the most popular or the maybe the biggest bullies, you know, on the playground. And uh, we'd had two captains, and then they would have to choose teams. And they'd usually shoot the basketball, you know, to see who started choosing first. And then they would start choosing their team. Now, of course, 
you know, in the competitive sense, you would choose people who were the best players, but usually that's not the way that went. Uh, they would choose according to their friends and, and all that sort of thing, and that, that's fine. But let me tell you, if you're the young guy there, and like I was, I was the, usually often the youngest guy there, and I was the tallest guy there. And uh, but yet they, you know, I, I may not be the guy that they really liked the best. In fact, they might not like me just simply because I was younger. And so you'd wait there and they'd be choosing teams and calling names. And, and, and you know, it's such an awkward feeling when people are being picked, but you're not being picked. You're not being chosen. And you really kind of don't know what to do with yourself. So you kind of stand there, you know, with your head down, you know, and and uh, maybe kick a rock around the, on the on the ground there with your foot. And, and you just don't know what to do with yourself because you're waiting for your name to be called. And you're not picked. You're not chosen. Here's the good news. Jesus picks you and you're his you're his number one draft pick you see and, and and the reason i say that you know he you know today with video games you can make up a, a sport game and you can actually not only choose people who actually exist and the kind of skills they have some games you can make up your own player and you, you can create them with your own, what you, kind of skills you want for your team. Well, God's always been doing that. He, he, he creates people with various skills, giftedness uh, to be on his team. And it's for a purpose. Um, and, you know, Emily Foreman says in the last page of her book, she says, you know, to live without purpose sometimes is worse than dying. If we don't know what our purpose is, if we don't know why we're here, but first of all, we need to understand Jesus chose us, picked us to be on his team. He says, you didn't choose me. Uh, I chose you. Now, we all think, okay, I, I, I've made a decision for God. You know, I, I've chosen to walk with God. I, I'm going to be a Christian or I'm, I'm, I'm going to follow Muhammad or I'm going to follow Buddha. You, you need to understand, God's already picked you to be on his team. Jesus says, I picked, chose you <laughs> to be on my team. And he even says what it's the purpose is. He says, I picked you to bear fruit. And let me tell you, the only fruit that God cares about if eternally is people. So he's, he's picked you somehow, some way to influence other people. He's picked you. You're chosen. So I hope that you feel picked today because you are. And if you don't feel that way, you're not dealing with reality. The reality is that God chose you. <laughs> he And he says to them, I picked you. And, and he says, I, I've told you the things I've told you for a purpose. And then he says that my joy might be your joy and your joy wholly mature. Now, you know, I've read this wrong most of my life. I grew up in the church. And, you know, my dad preacher, you know, and I come from a long line of preachers and all that. But I got to tell you, I that doesn't mean I understood the Bible. <laughs> I took a whole lot of things for granted. One of the things I took for granted was that I knew a whole lot about the Bible. And then I found out I really needed to study that thing because it's full of wonderful joy. And here it talks about joy. God is talking about what brings him joy, what makes him happy. What, what thrills him? And you know what, what thrills him is really the same thing that thrills a lot of us. 
One thing I know about North American studies show that we North Americans, most of us who are parents and grandparents, care more about our children and our grandchildren than we do ourselves. I tell you what, this week I kept watching uh, a video of my two-year-old granddaughter who doesn't live close to us. And she just, she just turned two and, and, and she was playing hide and seek. And she doesn't say hide and seek. She points her finger and says, hi, see. And then she just smiles and laughs and all that. I'll tell you what, watching her play hide and seek with my son brought me so much joy and, and my wife. And we just kept playing that little video they sent us over and over, watching, watching her play hide and seek. And we found joy because she was having fun. She was having joy. You know, that's exactly what this verse says. This is what Jesus, he's the one who said this. He says, my joy is when you have joy and my joy is in you. I always thought it was, that, okay, God inserts joy into us. That's not what he was saying. I, I misread it. He's saying, my joy is you, in you. When you have true joy, that gives me joy. And as parents, grandparents, as friends of other people, when they have joy and it causes us to be joy, have joy, that's what he's saying. That's how much he, he's picked you. You're his daughter. You're his son. If you have come to him and begin to follow his directions and walk with him every day. You're his son. You're his daughter. And he finds great joy. He especially finds joy when you are joyful. That makes him happy. And as a, as a grandpa, and as a dad, when my children, when my grandchildren have joy, it's the top of the line. <laughs> I got to tell you, it really is. And he says, I've loved you uh, the way my father has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. Now, that's that's a translation from the message and um, uh, Eugene Peterson's message, which he, he said he tried to translate the Bible into American. He meant North American. And uh, boy, th this... Th I don't think most of us find it easy to really believe he loves us this much. He, he says, I've loved you just like my father's loved me. And, and, and he said, I want you to make yourselves at home in my love. Make yourself at home in my love. Wow. Make yourself at home. Uh, he, you know, we, we, when you have a guest come into your house and you say, hey, just want you to make yourself at home here. Well, when we go to the Father's house, God's house, he says, this is your home, so act like it. <laughs> make yourself at home. You're my kid. You're my child. You're a child of God. He really wants this. And we are often so, so focused on our failures, our sin, our shame, that we can't enjoy being a God's kid, even if it's forgiven. Now, if you haven't apologized to God and you're feeling guilt and shame, I'm glad because we should feel guilt and shame for our sin. But if, if we have asked God to forgive us and it's forgiven sin, he chooses to remember it no more. And he wants us to put that behind us. He said, I didn't come into this world to condemn the world, but that the world would be saved through me. He doesn't want us blaming and shaming, living in shame. He wants us to feel at home in his love and put that shame behind us. He really wants that. Can you do that? 
Most of us struggle with that. We think of some of the wrong choices we made that hurt other people, hurt ourselves, hurt situations, costly stuff. He says, feel home. You're loved here. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Relax. You're, you're my boy. You're my daughter. Relax. <laughs> and he says, I'm no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master's thinking and planning. No, I've named you friends because I've let you in on everything I've heard from the Father. Again, this is from the message. <laughs> Look at this. This is awesome. <laughs> Jesus looked at his disciples and said, you know what? I don't, I don't call you servants. I call you my friends. You, know, you, you, you don't have your boss come to you and say, hey, I want, I want to go over my personal checkbook with you so you can see how much I actually have in my checkbook. And I want to explain every check I've written, you know, or I, I want to show you my credit card report so that you know how I've spent my personal money. No, you don't do that with your boss and your employee. That, 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 that doesn't happen. We would consider that inappropriate. But in friends, <laughs> with friends, we go, man, did I have a bad day? <laughs> I went to the dentist and it cost me a whole lot more. It cost, or that car cost me, or I had a breakdown. And we, we really give a lot of information. Sometimes we give them more information than our friends want to hear or that we should really share. But there are friends. And we talk about personal stuff with friends. Jesus said, you're my friends. I haven't withheld anything back from you. I've told you all my business. I've told you why I'm here, what I'm doing. I've told you everything because you're my friends. I've gotten real personal with you. And I want you to get real personal with me. <laughs> That's Jesus. That's the real Jesus. Now, you know, the world makes him out to be something else, but that's the real Jesus. He wants to be your friend and my friend. <laughs> and so, is do you look at him as your friend? Do you, do you really think of him that way? Or is he just some, you know, long-bearded guy sitting on a throne somewhere far away who you think, judges you and condemns you and instead of this one who says, hey, I want to be your closest friend. Yeah, I'm the creator. I'm the almighty God. I, I'm what holy is. But I still want to be your friend. I want to be your closest friend. I want you to talk to me. I want you to tell me everything. That's Jesus. <laughs> and so, hey, I just want to run over this, what, what we've talked about so far. First of all, he, he, he chose you. He picked you. He picked you to be his child. He picked you to be on his team. And he created you for a purpose. For a purpose. And the type of relationship he wants is, is the same kind of relationship you would have with an older child, an adult child, where you actually have a, a close friendship and you share in family together, and yet you're also friends. And he says, my joy is when you have joy. My joy is in you, because <laughs> you're my kid. <laughs> and I want to see you do well. That's God. And he says, I, I, I made you for a purpose, and that purpose has to do with serving and helping make this world better among people. It's all about people. It's the only thing you can take to heaven with you is some people. And he said, love each other just the same way that I have loved you. Now, I want to I want to try to help us with this because there's, there's something I want you to understand. 
how much he loves you. Now, I have to say, if somebody came up to me and they were talking to me about you, and they said, and God said, Gary, I'll let them go to heaven if you will lay down your life for them. I can tell you, I don't have to think about that one. I know what my answer would be. You may not believe this, and I may not know your name. And I may have never met you and you've never met me. But if God said, Gary, if you'll lay down your life, if you'll give your life and die, I'll let them go to heaven. I can tell you my answer would already be yes. And you say, I'm not sure I believe you. Let me tell you something. Uh, since I was 18, I've been traveling this nation and this world often risking my life in countries and places where it, it would be very easy for me to have given my life for somebody. I proved it. I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to do that. But if, if the question was asked, Gary, you got four kids, you got six grandkids, We'll let you, whoever you are, God says, I'll let them go to heaven if you will sacrifice and give up the life of one of your four children or their spouses or one of your grandchildren. I, I'm afraid I need to apologize to you, friend. I don't love you that much. I don't think. <laughs> if I was asked to, to give up one of my children, well, I have three boys, one girl. If I was, if the proposition was, I'll let them go to heaven if you give one of your children. I, I'm afraid. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I probably should love you that much. But I don't know that I do. <laughs> uh, Jesus said in this same chapter 15, if, if <laughs> true love means laying down your life for a friend, I, I'm willing to do that. But to take it uh, a, a step further and to give uh, one of my children for you? Sorry. But the point is, I know someone who does love you that much. You know, most of you know the verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only child, his only son, in order that no one would perish, but that everyone could go to heaven and have eternal life. God the Father loves you that much. He really does. <laughs> and it wasn't just an easy death Jesus died. He died on the cross, nails in his hands and his feet, spear in his side. Why? He was paying for my sin. He was paying for your sin. He took our place. Sin's an awful, awful, awful thing. It makes such a mess. It hurts It hurts the person who commits the sin. It hurts people around them. It hurts, hurts, hurts. And the Bible says we've all sinned. You and I have sinned. But here came God the Father, and he said, I, I'm going to take care of this and my son and I have decided to do this <laughs> and God gave his son he loved you and me that much and he's waiting on us to respond 
What's he want us to do? He wants us to be willing to acknowledge and apologize for our sin and to turn and go back to the plan he had for us all along. All along. He said, I picked you all along. I chose you all along. Come back to the plan. And, and, and his plan is that all the people of earth, all the people that have ever lived, all the people that will ever live, he wanted every one of them to be his found children. <laughs> and many of us just say, hey, I don't need that. But we do. And he picked you. I want to encourage you. If you've never. If you've never responded to him with that apology. And said God I want to do things. I want to do. The, you made me for a purpose. I want to do it. Help me know what that is. I apologize. Yeah I know I've sinned. I'm sorry. Really don't want to live that way. I, I want to bless people. I don't want to hurt people. I want to bless people. <laughs> well, he's listening. He's wireless. He, he, he's listening closely. He can hear your thoughts even, Jesus said. So just simply say, God, I'm sorry. I do want to do your plan. Please forgive me. He's listening. <laughs> and then do it his way and, and and take his word the bible as the roadmap of life find someone who can teach you uh, you can always come to these conversations with gary if i'm not given enough go to a bible a good bible teaching preacher or bible study get in a small group find so that you can learn how much he loves you and find your purpose. Thanks for listening today. You're picked. You're chosen. He loves you. His joy is in you because you're his kid. You're not even his grandkid. You're his kid. <laughs> he loves you. Thanks for listening to, to Conversations with Gary. Trusting